Princesses. Today I'm going to be talking about the Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder in the translucent color. I think I was supposed to say that is the translucent loose setting powder, but it's just written the opposite way on the powder bottom. I picked this up while I was in London shopping in Harrods because clearly this is the only thing that I can afford from Harrods even though I really really wanted to go there and the tour bus was going past it and it was like a hop on hop off tour so I was like I'll just go take a peek at all the things I cannot have. But New Zealand doesn't actually have a Laura Mercier counter. I don't think I've ever seen anyone selling Laura Mercier products unless they're second hand and I've always wanted to try this powder out but I've never had the chance to. So I decided to pick it up while I was there because you know I was there and I wasn't certain that I'd ever see any other Laura Mercier counters because like is this sold in Sephora? I don't know. But the Laura Mercier girl was really lovely. She helped me to find a foundation that may suit my skin tone so if I can buy some Laura Mercier online I will probably buy the I think it's the oil free foundation in the shade Ivory. It looked pretty good but she wasn't able to put it on my face um, and she couldn't give me a tester so it's kind of like yeah I'm not gonna buy that but I'll buy the powder. <laughs> the worst customer ever honestly. So the product description is really long and it says, With multiple major awards and counting, Laura Mercier's Best in Beauty cult favourite bestseller is your go-to setting powder. Loose powder feels luxuriously dense in the jar, feels incredibly soft and silky on the skin. Pros love the super smooth application, goes on evenly, blends effortlessly, provides great wear. Sets makeup without adding weight or texture. So I have to like touch my skin because I'm like, is it silky smooth? Yeah, it's pretty silky smooth. Like, it's pretty nice. <laughs> So the powder itself comes housed in this cute little jar. I have to say that the lid is really difficult because it doesn't really screw on properly. It's very loose, so I'm a little bit nervous about traveling with it ever. Quite a lot of the powder comes out of the sifter, so I recommend dipping your brush into the powder and then just dipping it into the little lid just to make sure that your brush isn't overloaded with the powder. The powder itself is not super translucent, it's kind of like a little beige color, but it does blend out to be pretty translucent on my skin, though this is much better if you have deeper skin because it's not going to give you quite as much of a white flashback. Especially in comparison to a white translucent powder, I do find that these ones, even though they are marked as translucent, they're fine for my skin, but if you have a deeper skin tone, like my younger sister has got much deeper skin than me, this actually makes her look a little bit ghostly. Whereas this kind of colour, even though it seems like it's pale, it does actually work much better. So I'm going to put the Laura Mercier powder on this side of my face and then my Up Hue powder on this side. I've been using the Up Hue powder for maybe like three months now after I finished my skin food powder so I know what the oil control is like and I know what it looks like on my skin. And then at the end of the day, I'm probably going to be teaching for about eight hours today. I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like after a day's wear. So I'm going to use a big fluffy brush. This is the Real Techniques blush brush. I just like the shape of this brush. So what I'm going to do is dab it into the powder and the sifter itself. It picks up way too much. And then I'm just going to lightly roll it in the cap like that to make sure that the powder is like sort of a bit more evenly distributed on the brush. And that way I don't end up with lumps of powder or anything like that and it knocks off any excess into the cap so that I can use the excess. And I'm just going to set my face by lightly dabbing. I don't want to do any blending or like rubbing motions because I find that it disturbs my base. And I'm just going to dip in a little more for my forehead. And I can use like little swirling motions down my neck because I don't really have foundation on my neck. So that is it for the side. You can see that my face looks a little bit more matte. It doesn't feel sticky at all, but I really like for this powder particularly that it doesn't lose the dewiness. So I'm wearing a pretty dewy base at the moment. It is the Holica Holica Peco Glow Cushion, which I used for the final time today. Really sad. Now the cushion is definitely run out. I like literally have been turning the like little cushion over and over to get all of the product out. But my skin still looks really luminous, but it doesn't look oily. And you can definitely see a reduction of shine, especially in like this portion of my face, which has bigger pores. So now to test the longevity, I'm going to set this side of my face with my Up powder. This Up powder did originally come with a sifter, but because I'm down to the last part of the powder, I've had to take the sifter out because I can't actually get any more product out if I don't do that. <laughs> so that is the difference between the two sides. For me, I think that the Up side looks more matte. So I don't feel like my skin looks as luminous. It also looks slightly paler. I don't know, can you guys tell? And then the Laura Mercier side definitely looks more luminous, which, like I said, I prefer. And then up close, this is what it looks like. So I think that the Up You powder still does a really good job at getting rid of a lot of the more apparent pores, but I think it looks... You can definitely see the difference. <laughs> 
up close. This side looks slightly lighter, to me at least, but it's much more matte. You can't really see the luminous glow anymore, whereas the Laura Mercier side, yeah. You can still see a bit of the shine there. And yes, I know that my face is still a slightly different colour to my neck. It's getting better, it's not as far off, but yeah, I'm really tan in comparison. <laughs> I know. So I'm going to go about my day and I will check back in, in 8 hours and show you guys how this has worn. So I've been wearing this base for maybe like 8 hours now. So this is the up here side and this is the Laura Mercier side. From a distance there really isn't too much difference with the two powders. I can't see if one side is much more oily than the other really. I think that the Laura Mercier side looks more natural whereas this one is starting to look like foundation-y. So we get a little bit closer and my pores are a little bit more noticeable on the up hue side. I think for me they're less noticeable or smoother on the Laura Mercier side. But I think that's probably something that you might just have to know my skin really well to see. Like I don't think it's that obvious. My forehead, it doesn't look too different. I think that the Laura Mercier side just looks more natural whereas this one I feel like you can see that there's foundation and powder on my skin. I think that's the biggest difference for me. And same with the chin and lower cheek area. You can see that there's a bit more cakiness around this side in comparison to that side and not just because there's less pimples on that side, really. For the longevity test, I think that the difference is pretty minute. I think that in general, the Laura Mercier gives you a more natural look. It doesn't completely mattify your skin unless you're really going to bake the powder into your skin. So if you like a dewy finish, I think that it is more preferable. But yeah, I'll leave you with some more final thoughts after I've tried the powder for a couple more weeks. I can definitely see why the Laura Mercier powder has so much hype in the beauty community, but for me I think the most impressive and the most valuable thing is that it doesn't change the finish of the foundation or BB cream that I'm wearing underneath. There are so many powders that I've tried, including the one that I was using before which was the Up Hue powder which I think I showed you a half face of before as well, which I must have because I literally don't have any other powders at the moment that was dumb. But it really mattifies my skin, which I think for some princesses is a massive pro. But for me, if I'm wearing a really, really dewy foundation, it's probably because I want my skin to look dewy. You know, I think that's a reasonable expectation, right? So if your powder is mattifying it, I mean, what's the point of wearing a dewy foundation? You may as well just pick a matte foundation. For me, when I use a powder, I don't want it to change what my foundation looks like at all. I just want my face not to be sticky because I have a lot of hair. I mean, these are just like my little side parts that can't fit into the bun at the moment. But my hair is like most of the length of my back at the moment because I need to go and cut it. And I hate it when it sticks to my face. Like, I hate it with a passion. I think it looks like, I don't know, it just makes me feel sweaty. You know, like, when you're sweating and, like, your, fa your like, hair sticks to your face. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't like it. I can't think of anything that I dislike more than having a sticky foundation that makes my hair stick to my face. And I also get an oily T-zone. So I need to set the perimeter of my face as well as the T-zone which means that I pretty much have to set my entire face. I have to also set my chin, it's part of the T-zone, but also I play the flute, so I need to set that because otherwise I, the foundation just transfers straight onto the flute and there's absolutely no point in putting it on in the first place. So I have been thoroughly enjoying using this powder. My skin looks luminous. At the moment it doesn't look pretty luminous because um, I'm using the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation, which is not really dewy. I haven't used it in so long. And I had to like use the sunscreen on my neck to make it wider, <laughs> but you'll see that in like Two days when you see this get ready with me but i've absolutely been loving it i used it to bake today and it's also fantastic for that it didn't give me any white cast it looks so natural but my under eye area looks so smooth and yeah i'm seriously impressed i'm glad that it comes in such a big jar although to start with i was a bit like apprehensive because i was like what if i don't like it like now i've got however much i've got 29 29 grams <laughs> oh because it's one ounce stupid conversions but no I really like it I endorse this product I'm not sponsored by Laura Mercier but if I was I would really enjoy that and I would definitely recommend it if you've been finding that your powders make your face too matte and you're getting fed up with having a super matte face all the time even though it's expensive I'd highly recommend picking this up or at least going to a counter and getting them to try it on your skin because it is unexpectedly a favorite for me <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm pretty sure I rambled through the whole thing. This is what happens when I don't read off a script, but I don't know. Is it entertaining? I don't know. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!